it's not necessarily like my personal problem, but just my like, interpretation of what Bible has on, on the subject, which is which is same sex marriage. Mm -hmm. um, so I would love to kind of read the, the scripture of the Leviticus um, eighteen twenty two. Yeah. And um, wanted to talk about how that seems contradictory to John four, seven and eight. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a, it's a an interesting one and I'd just love to know what Leviticus eighteen was it? 1822. 1822. This, uh, this famous verse. You shall not lie with a man, male as with a woman. It is an abomination. You know? And then, I think the verse you're probably looking for is 1 John 4, 7 and 8, right? 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Famous passage. It's about love. Um, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is, of, is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Is that verse? You're thinking about that verse. Well, um, it's a... Uh, you're not the only person asking this question. I mean, you're, you, you, it's impressive because you've actually you know, looked at the Bible passages and you, you, you wonder, is there a, con, um, a contradiction here? Um, but let me just make this comment. For some people think, you know, again, Leviticus is a portion of the, the theocracy, right? So can't we just get rid of that because like, we got rid of some, some the other, we don't practice you know, stoning, stoning kids anymore, right? Um, but all throughout the Bible, sexual morality is part of the moral law. And, and like, like I explained to you before, God, Jesus did not get rid of the moral law. In fact, he, if anything, he intensified the moral law. Like the place, that, an example where he says, if you look at a woman with lust, you commit adultery. I mean, that probably went well. <laughs> went over really well when he first said that. I was like, really? Right? And um, that, that's an example of how he intensifies moral law. Um, so, okay, the... I know, I know there's some liberal, theologically liberal, I'm not talking politically liberal, theologically liberal who want to kind of accept and reinterpret the Bible with that thing. But I think that's wrong. And the vast majority of Christians in history, they would have thought that's, that's crazy stuff. I mean, because the, the whole Bible is rife with, with moral law. And by the way, you cannot divorce that from sexual morality. And if anything, um, so let me just try to back up a, a, a bit. When some people think that, like, if we disagree with homosexuals and say, like, that behavior is considered sin by God, and, he, and the Bible even calls it abomination, that therefore we must hate them, I don't think that's, first I would just disagree with that. I think Christians can perfectly love somebody who's sinning, because we love each other, <laughs> all right? And... Uh, and, um, and we know there are people sinning in, our, in the church, and I'm not even talking light sins. And certainly we love our neighbors, and it may not be homosexuality, but some other sins. So I think our culture accuses Christians of hating gay people, and maybe there are some people who say they are Christians and they hate gay people, and they single out homosexuals and say that you know, we hate them, but like, that's not Christian. <laughs> that's just, that right there is just not even Christian. Now, um, so that, I want to just say that. I think you can love someone who is sinning and or you disagree with. And in fact, I think that's a very good, that's, a, that's, that's how we should, we should love our enemies, as, as Christ says, right? Or even love people that do harm to us, as, as Christ says. Um, but this more specific question is, if we accept the Leviticus passage, which, which clearly says that homosexuality is wrong, <laughs> in that sense, um, does that contradict? Like, if we say that, it, if we agree that this is an abomination, that's a hard word. Abomination means that's a really sick and terrible thing, right? Um, does that does that mean that we have that we can't love people who are gay, right? And um, this is a huge question. So let me just try to let me frame this in a couple. Words. Number one, right? Christians believe that all human beings are made are created according to wisdom. That includes our maleness and our femaleness. That means God created sex. <laughs> and that means God understands its purpose. And so one of the things that's going on in our culture is there's no kind of like clear understanding of what sex is. In fact, there's all kinds of different, let's call it theologies, of sex. So a secular kind of theology, I don't know, it's kind of a weird way of putting it. But because, again... If you have a particular take on sex, it goes back to that problem that David Foster Wallace says. You have your own, like, story of reality, right? <laughs> and you can't prove yours. So the secular person says, so one common, I'll just give you one, I mean, I don't know if you agree with it or any of you, but like a lot of secular people today say that Christians are just judgmental, 
He goes, why can't a man have sex with a man if, if long as they don't harm each other? It's consensual, and they don't harm each other. So everybody, so when they say that, they think that that's a universal principle that everybody should be able to understand, but they don't understand that they're using their story. They're using their kind of like theology, but they're just imposing it upon everybody else. The fact is, if you said that principle, a man can have sex with a man, or a woman can have sex with a woman, as long as it's consensual and they don't harm anybody, if you said that throughout the world now, I'm not even talking about a thousand years ago, go now, into all kinds of other cultures, people would look at you and go, what are you talking about? <laughs> like that's, they would think that there's harm going on right there. They would say, that does harm to the family. That does harm to children. That does harm to society. That does harm to like what it means to be an honorable man and what it means to be an honorable woman. It does harm to how men and women should come together in a certain kind of way and not come together in other kinds of way. Like, and of course, every culture understands that a man shouldn't say, shouldn't rape a woman, for instance. Well, that's obviously a form of wrong way of doing it, which well, almost, I hope almost every culture agrees with. But even now, you don't need to understand the Bible to say that that principle in the secular way of looking at sex and then objects to the way Christians from perceive it, that that right there is its own kind of like, that's its own theological story that they're imposing on everybody else. And so, I guess, I, I, I can't give you a full on more, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm trying to challenge that even, not even from a Christian point of view, that idea that you can just have consensuality as long as there's no harm. What they usually mean is there's no violence, right? But, but there is, there's, there's a different kind, it will reshape the society. <laughs> it will reshape the way men and men, you know, men and women relate to one another. I, 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 it will reshape, like, um, well, who gets to use the bathroom? <laughs> it will reshape, can you trust that, that coach hanging out with that 12-year-old boy? You know? Um, wait a second, he's not a boy, he's 16. 16, well, what, what's the consensual age? I mean, all those questions are just totally being like exploded in our society because there isn't a clear kind of understanding what is sex and what is it for. Now, I want to say one more thing and I'll stop, okay? The Bible doesn't just have a kind of morality about sex, like this is right and this is wrong. The Bible has a whole vision of how the male and the female comes together in beauty and in harmony. And, um, and then there's a whole theology about it. It's called covenant. <laughs> it's covenant. So that you unite through promises, and that uniting is a beautiful form of union, which the Bible calls one flesh, and the way that one flesh is enacted is through sex. <laughs> the act of sex is not really merely just a physical act, or even merely an emotional act, it is a spiritual union that brings the male and female to a deep unity of oneness. And that is a whole vision that that kind of covenantal union is throughout the whole Bible. The Bible opens with the marriage and the Bible closes with the marriage. And the Bible has a beautiful vision of how someone unites with someone that's different than them, kind of the same but different than them, into a deep unity. And that is symbolized by sex. So that Christians can change our understanding of sex is, we can't do that unless we violate almost the whole Bible. There is a very beautiful and like deep theological understanding of how two that are different come together in a deep unity, and that if you, ch if you choose to try to seek that in the same, that you're, you're, you're really not just going against God's laws, but you're really breaking yourself. You're breaking manliness and you're breaking yourself. You're a guy. Or if you're a woman, you're breaking yourself. So, I think we as Christians, yeah, we could say it's an abomination, but out of love for our neighbor, I mean, we're not, that's obviously not the word we're going to try to use. Actually, we, we, we want to stand up for biblical truth out of love for our neighbors because they're going to miss out on the deep blessing of the way God designed it to be. So, and I think that's more than consistent with God. For 1 John 4, 7, let us love one another. And I think every church will have people that struggle with same-sex attraction. And will we love them? In our church, I have explicitly said so from the pulpit, that we must love them. And so, if a person, if we have a brother in the church who loves Jesus, but says, I'm sorry, I kind of have a thing for guys, I sure hope that our church won't condemn them, because hello, everybody can find some form that will really fall short. Because even that, that's, you know, that's covered by the blood of Jesus, and then that can 
find uh, forgiveness and healing in new ways. I, I, okay. That was